ونسلم على سيدنا ومولانا محمد رسوله النبي الامين المكين الحكيم الكريم الرؤوف الرحيم اما بعد يا ايها الذين امنوا ادخلوا في السلم كافا قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كلامه المجيد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان الدين عند الله الاسلام وقال تعالى يا ايها الذين امنوا ادخلوا في السلم كافا صدق الله مولانا العظيم Respectable guests, honourable representatives of different faiths and communities, social activists and political leaders of American society. by the grace of almighty allah this is definitely a moment of pleasure I would like to say 
and express and communicate clearly to all communities and societies of the human world that in Islam peace is the fundamental governing principle of every religious and spiritual and social and political action performed locally or globally. Peacemaking and peace maintaining at every level and sphere of human life is the foremost duty of every single human soul and every single Muslim living in any part of the world according to the commandments revealed by God and communicated to us by Holy Prophet Muhammad And I would like to say and convey this message to all those who are concerned about the present upsetting situation of human world. That war is not and should not, should never be a political choice, act of fighting and act of killing is primarily against the teachings of Islam. Islam prohibits every single follower of Islamic faith to take up the arms to enter into an act of fighting, to enter into an act of violence, unless you are forced to defend yourself against brutal aggression, against tyranny committed on you, against oppression, or in a situation where a war has been enforced has been forced on you. It has been already initiated. Only then you can take up arms for your self-defense to save your life, your land, your property, your rights. Moreover, advancing specific social, political, or religious interests or economic interests or imposing religious beliefs are not the legitimate and permissible objectives of war according to the teachings of Islam. Because the basic and fundamental principle in teaching of Islam is that there is no coercion in Islam. So advancing and imposing your religious beliefs on others, these are not legitimate and permissible objectives of war in Islam. War or any armed action is only the last defensive measure for your protection. If the dialogue and all other peaceful diplomatic means fail to resolve the situation, to resolve the problem, because the first preference, the foremost preference has been given to resolve your disputes through peaceful dialogue and diplomatic dialogues and peaceful means of resolving this. 
the conflict. If an unjust bar is imposed on you as Muslims, then even in this state of war, I would say during a warfare, even in this particular state of warfare, you as Muslims are not allowed to attack on the civilians or any non-combatant citizen. He may belong to even to your enemy state. He may belong to the state on host as hostility. He may belong to the state at war with you. Even during the warfare, Islam has totally forbidden his followers to attack on peaceful, non-combatant civilians. Because the peaceful human beings, they may be Muslims or non-Muslims, they may belong to any religion, or they may not belong to any religion, just as being a peaceful human soul, he has a fundamental right according to the teachings of Quran and Sunnah and according to the fundamental commandments of Islam that their life, their wealth, their property, their honor, respect, everything is to be protected and respected by Muslims. Islam believes in all fundamental human values, fundamental human rights. Islam believes in empowerment of women. Islam believes in rule of law. Islam believes in equal administration of justice for every single person belonging to any society irrespective of faith, creed, culture, and color. Islam believes for economic, in economic growth. Islam believes in social stability. Islam believes in political stability. Islam believes in pluralism. Islam believes in developing democratic values in society. Islam is for establishing a society based on democratic values and fundamental human rights. And this is what Holy Prophet Muhammad has done. After his migration to Medina, the first Islamic society on the earth, which was established by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, directly. And he was a chosen head of the state jointly chosen by the Jews, Muslims, non-Muslims, immigrants, locals, and people, all non-believers belonging to different tribes. He was unanimously elected head of the state of Islamic State in Medina. At that time, the first Islamic State and the first Islamic constitution which was drafted and the first Islamic society which was established and organized that had certain principles and bases. And one of those bases was to promote education for male and female equally. And to provide an easy access to knowledge. And Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa struggled and strived for a promoting moderation and negating extremism and providing security to the citizens, Muslims and non-Muslims equally, from every kind of threat of violence. He provided guarantee of safety and security to his citizens. And his citizens means all Muslims and non-Muslims, because the basic political alliance was between the Jewish tribes and the Muslim tribes. And he discouraged every form, kind, and manifestation of brutality, of inhumanity, of violence, of extremism, of radicalism and terrorism.
for the Prophet وسلم, established a system based on social, economic and legal justice and he strengthened the rule of law and equality in the eyes of law was given to every human soul and he strived for promoting the key capabilities of human life in all personal, spiritual, intellectual, social, economic and political spheres. He fought for economic growth, for economic stability. That's why the first society founded by him was the welfare society ever established first time in the history of mankind. And that government took care of every basic need of human beings in that society. Through the act of Muakhat and act of Misak, economic stability was provided and economic equity and equitable economic system was provided to that society. Equal opportunities for having basic materials and means for a decent standard of human life, they were provided to all of them. Then Holy Prophet ﷺ promoted pluralism in his society. This Medinan Islamic society was the first multicultural society of the human history. He promoted pluralism. He promoted democracy. He promoted a tolerant behavior. He promoted a peaceful coexistence. And he provided a democratic atmosphere and environment to every single person to their own. So these were the basic principles on which Islamic society was founded. These were the foundational stones, fundamental principles of Islamic polity. If anybody today claiming to be a Muslim practice in, practices Islam in a different way, or claim a different theology or ideology contrary to the principles provided and implemented by Prophet Muhammad in Medinan society. So he is starting something against Quran and Sunnah of the Holy Prophet. And he is starting and he is expressing his own views but against the fundamental teachings of Islam. And he has nothing to do with Islam. Because the time is short for this English session, I would like to give, to substantiate what I have said. Just a few examples, practical examples. Instead of going into theoretical discussions, instead of mentioning the commandments, instead of mentioning just the teachings, I will try to mention some practical aspects and examples demonstrated by Prophet Muhammad and Medinan society. You know the world democracy, to me, no peace in this world is possible without implementation of true democracy in human society. All those societies, those who are being governed by dictatorial rules. There can be military dictatorships or these can be monarchical dictatorships. They are primary and primarily against the teachings of Islam and Sunnah of the Prophet. Every single Islamic state has to become democratic if they want to follow the footsteps of Prophet Muhammad. democracy and it is an English word having a Greek root but
But in Arabic we say it is translated into Al Jumhuriya. This is the Arabic translation of democracy. In Urdu language we say Jumhuriya. Some people, unfortunately, not having proper knowledge and deep knowledge and authentic knowledge of Islamic teachings, they consider as if democracy, I mean Jumhuriya. This is an ideology which originated in West and it has no roots in Islamic teachings. This is a big misunderstanding in certain minds. Jumhuriya, democracy. It, this world and this system both have an Islamic and Arabic root. It was never introduced to Islam through Western world. But I would say it was introduced to the present Western world through Islamic culture. I would like to quote Imam Ibn al Asim on his famous book An Nihaya fi Gharib al Asr. He quotes a hadith from Abdullah bin Zubair. He spoke to Hazrat Muawiyah and said, Inna la nada marwan yarmi jamahira Quraysh. He said, the majority of the Quraysh, we would not allow Marwan to disturb them. The word Jamahir, the plural of Jumhur, was used by a companion in his conversation to other companion of Holy Prophet. And this is a hadithic word. In another hadith of Imam Nakhai, he says, in our days, in Arabian society, there was a very delicious juice and it was loved and used by majority of the people. Since that juice was used and it was liked by the majority of the people living in Arab society, so the word Al-Jumhuri, this term was given to that juice. It, it was used to, they used to say that this juice is al jumhuri I mean, This is a democratic juice. Why they say, Qila lahul jumhuri li anna jumhur an nasi yastahbilu lahu. Because